today from Seeds of Happiness. Uh, we started chapter five. Today we are on lesson number uh, two, page 106. If you feel that you are disliked by someone, don't bottle up your anxiety, but ask the help of those around you. Human beings are emotional animals, and there are those we get along easily with, and those we don't. There are always one or two people of whom we might think, that person dislikes me, or he's really tough on me. We worry, there's always something troubling in the things he says, or she doesn't seem to think at all well of me. Haven't you sometimes felt like that? It's all right if it's an unimportant matter, but sometimes things worry us and cause us a lot of stress. A woman in her 30s consulted me about a problem. There is a person senior to me in the workplace who always seems cold and only toward me. She doesn't like me, I conclude, and then everything she says and does seems directed against me. I get so irritated that I can't do my work properly. It all started from the time when the woman was moved to a section where the woman with more seniority was already working. The woman found that her polite greetings to her senior were almost completely ignored and this, con and this continued for some time. Convinced that her senior was thinking badly of her, the woman would become irritated even by the sound of the other woman's voice. I ask a question. Did your senior really dislike you and take such a negative attitude towards you? Well, she always speaks to me in a cold way. Why would she take that attitude if she didn't dislike me? I see. And is it only you she speaks to that way? I'm not sure about that, was her rather evasive answer. Well then, why don't you try asking her if she dislikes you or not? I can hardly come right out and ask her that, can I? Probably not, but why not ask one of your friends in the workplace whether she thinks the senior in question dislikes you, I suggested. When she asked her friend that, the answer came back. Not just you, she's that way to everyone. When she realized she was not the object of special dislike and that her senior was that way with everyone, she felt much better about the situation, as she told me in a thank you email. The problem was with the other woman who wasn't good at dealing with other people in general. When we start to think that someone may dislike us, we can become slightly paranoid, convinced that she really dislikes me. But if we ask about the matter, it often turns out that that's not the case. If you can't ask the person directly, try casually asking a friend's opinion. Sometimes it happens that one really is disliked, but even so, one needn't take it too much to heart. If you can figure out why the person dislikes you, you can take care and deal with the issue. If you worry yourself with all sorts of speculations, things will seem worse and worse. That is not psychologically healthy. If instead of fretting by yourself, you ask the help of a third person, you may discover that the problem was only imaginary or you may learn that the cause or reason for the other party's unfriendly attitude towards you. Then you will be able to deal with the other person in a calmer, more reasonable way. So this kind of reminds me of something uh, a person shared in the meetup recently that if someone cuts her off on the freeway, instead of just taking it personally that, oh, what's wrong with this driver? She just changes that kind of narrative. Instead of saying, oh, that driver cut me off, you can uh, change how you speak to yourself by saying, for example, oh, that driver needed to come into the lane that I was using. 
something more objective, more um, uh, rational, less personal. First of all, you know, we say, oh, that driver came to my lane. <laughs> you know, it's funny how we claim things to be ours. I found out in the Native Americans' uh, language, there is no word for possession, that this is mine. They would even say, how can I ever say this is mine? It's part of the nature. This land, it has been here. It's for everyone. How can I claim it for me and me alone, excluding other people? How can I do that? So, so but, you know, for us too, uh, instinctively, actually, even my kitten, <laughs> He likes to go around and claim every part for himself. I know it's kind of animalistic, our reptilian brain, but we don't want to live in that kind of animal realm. This is mine and go everywhere and mark the places as ours. So, so first, if we let go of the idea of I, me, mine, uh, like Buddha says, you know, if we let go of these things that are constantly changing, so we don't have to get so angry or upset. And the driver may have to use my lane necessarily in order to come closer to the right lane and exit the freeway, for example. He or she maybe didn't plan better when they had to exit. Maybe they're new in the town. I always remember when I just got my own driver's license and I was new, inexperienced driver. Yeah, I inconvenienced a lot of other drivers because I didn't know where to exit or where things are. And I felt very bad that I inconvenienced, but I did remember some drivers reacted very uh, out of proportion. So, yeah, so if I, if I um, didn't want to practice the spiritual, you know, life, and just be angry at them. So then I would make myself miserable. But instead, we understand why people do what they do. Like we read, it says it makes us feel much calmer, more reasonable, and we can be comfortable in our own skin more and more. So this is our daily practice. Uh, we mind the gap, as I learned from Estefania yesterday in the Right View Lab. <laughs> Thank you for hosting. It was lovely. And uh, have a beautiful Tuesday, everyone. Bye.